Divine Truth Spirit Discussions. These are discussions with people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. Jesus speaks to a Kenyan earthbound couple through the intermediary Anto Globoka. This discussion was held on the 11th of April 2013 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Hello, welcome to our evening here. It is in Australia at the moment. Uh, we're, myself and Anto are going to do some mediumship together. We've decided that we're going to start doing some regular mediumship. As you may know, myself and Mary do regular mediumship usually three or four times every week with different spirits. And, and most of those record, we don't record most of those sessions. Uh, we only record some of them with audio and that's what you've seen on the Divine Truth website, some of the mediumship that we've done as audio. So what we've decided to do is to, with, with Anto and with Mary and a few others that uh, may come along, we've decided to do some mediumship sessions and we'll see how they go. We're not, uh, we, we don't have any real um, idea about what the outcome will be, but uh, what we want to do is start discussing and spending time with spirits who really want to ask questions about the spirit life after they've passed and also give whatever assistance we can give to them. And during these sessions as well, uh, the medium, whoever that is, will <laughs> probably receive some feedback afterwards. And so we're going to record that feedback as well so that anybody who is practicing mediumship can also have uh, some ideas about how to develop their mediumship further. So mm. we'd like to welcome Anto today. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks my friend for, for, for coming with us. So, um, we will get started pretty much straight away in every session. So uh, Anto's indicated that there, are an, uh, there is an African couple, a man mm -hmm. and a woman, who, who have come to speak to us this evening. So what we'll do is we'll get started speaking to them straight away. You don't mind if I close my eyes? Not at all. <coughs> do whatever you want. <laughs> whatever <laughs> makes you comfortable. <laughs> Hello. Hello. My name is Sute, Sute, and I have Kiyama with me as well. Yeah. Can I call you my friend? You can. Because I feel we actually are friends. <laughs> well, yeah, I definitely hope to be your friend. <laughs> I've been around you a fair bit mm -hmm. in the last couple of weeks. Right. And I just wanted the opportunity to talk to you. Yeah. Get a bit more of an understanding to learn about what I'm doing, what we are doing, how we can help our people. Yeah. Could I ask you a few questions firstly, just so that I've got a bit of an idea of where you come from and what, you know, how, how you've lived your life and when you passed? Yes. So where, where in Africa did you live? I'm from a small little village near Nairobi. Right, in Kenya. In Kenya. Yep. And I gained, sparked an interest in me when you had an interest in our people. Yes. And, I don't know, somehow I ended up here. <laughs> so you followed that interest to try and track, track us down, didn't mm, you? I followed Kiyama, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, so we, we decided, let's go and have a look. Yeah. Explore, have a chat. Yeah. And we've been trying to talk to you and influence you. Yeah. And How long have you been in the spirit world? Um... Probably about 30, 30, 40 years. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And what did you find in your, when you first passed into the spirit world? What, what was that like? I didn't actually know that I passed. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm only realising, I'm learning a lot of things mm -hmm. quite rapidly. So you, you sort of felt you were still living on earth, but a lot of people weren't listening to you anymore. No one was listening <laughs> to me. Yeah. But I was surrounded by a lot of people, yeah. you know, and, and we... Kiyama and I, I was following Kiyama around and yeah. and we just attended, you know, all these public events. Yeah. And why were you following Kiyama, Kiyama around? We danced together. Okay, so sweetheart, so. Yeah, yeah. it was okay. good to see her. Yeah. So she'd passed earlier? She passed, we, we passed pretty much in the same time period. Right. Mm. Yeah. It wasn't a pleasant way we passed, but. Right, it was, it was related to some violence? Yeah, we'll. Yeah, we were, we were tortured. We were 
we were both young, yeah. you know. We were spreading the news, trying to, how would you call it? Being a political activist. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We were trying to disseminate information and we got caught. Yeah. And, and it was information against the government. It was against the <coughs> government, mm -hmm. against the white people. Yeah. We're just trying to help. We wanted to educate people about what's going on and what we felt. Yeah. Mm. And then, of course, they weren't happy with that. They weren't happy with that. No. We didn't know they were following us. Yeah. And then we got caught. You know, they did some terrible things to us. Yeah. And um, they made me watch. And yeah. No, that's sad. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so you both passed in quick succession from each other. Yes. Mm. Yeah. It didn't take me long. I felt like it's time for me to go. Yeah. I didn't want to be in this world anymore. Yeah. But when you passed, you still were earthbound or still on the earth. Yeah, I didn't. Mm. It seemed like, what? Well, I just woke up. <laughs> I was yeah. still around, you know. But yeah. I wasn't around these people anymore. Yeah. You were only around the people that you wanted to be around. I didn't know that at the time. But mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I've come to realise that. Mm. I was around people who were singing and dancing and, yeah. you know. And just, all the things that you wanted to do. Yeah, just had fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with all these gatherings. But no one wanted to. To talk with you. Talk with you. Like, <laughs> what's going on now? So when I thought they everyone bet I betrayed them. That's what I felt. Right. So yeah. when did you first notice that there was something different to you in comparison to the people that you were living with on the earth who were still in their mortal body? It wasn't more my comparisons. It was more I started to receive, you know, some information. Mm -hmm. And there were... Uh, people talking about various things and um, I followed this priest and he was searching. You know, these people were searching yes. for certain things and all of a sudden I just followed what they were talking about and ended up here and then all of a sudden I've been learning. I've been observing and learning from people, Yes, you know, that we're not dead and yes. it explained a lot of things. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Mm. So, so what would you like to talk about or ask about? I'd like to understand how we can help our people, you know, like they don't seem to realise I'm there, they don't mm. realise we're both there. There's a lot of people with us who'd also like to help others. Mm -hmm. mm. How do we change the political regime to help our people? How do we get them to understand? Were you aware that a lot of the political regimes have actually changed quite significantly in Kenya since the time you've passed? Yes. Yep. Mm. So now there's completely different governance in Kenya, isn't there? There's more self-governance. But it's more, how do we help the people to realise, you know, the things that we're starting to realise? Mm -hmm. um, about their future. About their future, how mm -hmm. they can grow and prosper, how the country can grow, how, mm -hmm. you know, all the simple things mm -hmm. in life... Um, you know, there's a lot of lack of prosperity, there's, there's the connection, like, you intrigue me. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? You have all this knowledge mm -hmm. and it comes from somewhere and I, you know. I haven't worked out where yet. No, I don't, I don't <laughs> understand it. It just, you, I like what you say. Mm -hmm. I, and I'd like for that. I'd like you to go over there and help our people. Mm -hmm. And why don't you go there? Mm -hmm. I've well, been trying to influence you to go there, <laughs> but you don't seem to. Well, no, no, I, I do at, at, at some point in our future feel like we will be going to Africa quite a number of times. But uh, I also feel that there needs to be some preparatory work that occurs, both, uh, both, both with the people in Africa, but also with the spirits who surround those people. And so that, I suppose, involves you, doesn't it? Because you're mm. one of those spirits who surround those people. So perhaps what I could talk with you about then is the necessity to develop yourself first before you help others. Yes. You see, it's very, very hard to help people when you have not personally learned everything you need to know to share to them. I understand that. So, so my suggestion to you would be rather than focusing your attention on the people in Kenya or anywhere else on the planet at this point in time, 
is to start having a bit more of a self-focus. <clears throat> now, I don't mean in that to be selfish, but what I mean is to have a, a focus on yourself in the sense of looking at the different things that you need to come to terms with and also in the, understanding the truth about the life you're now living. So up until recently, you could basically say that you haven't really understood the truth about the life you've been living. No. And can you see how that's affected many of your choices and decisions? Mm -hmm. Because it's sort of like floundering around, isn't it? Um, in terms of, uh, or, or if, uh, if I could use another term, it's sort of like going from thing to thing, from, from experience to experience, not really understanding why you're even drawn to those experiences. Yeah, that's what's currently happening. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But I don't think that was happening in my, you know, earthly life. No, no. In your earthly life, you obviously had much more direction. Yeah, you I knew, You knew what you wanted to do. Yeah, I wanted to help. Yeah. I felt value in helping people. Yes. So, so now that you've passed and you've had sort of, in some ways, the life has been relatively aimless since you've passed. Can you see that? Yes. And, and some of that was related to the fact that you felt like you've missed out on certain things that you really enjoyed mm. on earth. And so that's why you stayed close to those particular experiences. Yeah, like... Like dancing. Like and, dancing and, yeah, and enjoying yourself. Yeah. But, but the goals and aims that you had, um, because they were earth-based goals and aims, once you passed you can no longer really have those same goals and aims. Can you see that? Because you're not really living on the earth anymore. That's an interesting observation. Mm. Mm, I did not realise it that way. I yeah. thought I was just taking a break. Yeah. And the reality is that there is a huge spirit world that you've yet to discover. You have spoken of that, mm -hmm. and I can't see one. No, I know you can't. The reason why you can't see one is, the most, is one of the most important things to learn. Why is it so important? Because cause if you understand the reason why you can't see things, then there's a chance that in the future you'll come to see those things. It's sort of like, you know, on Earth there were there are all sorts of pursuits that you never became involved in. Yes. And as you've seen now from the spirit world, there's all sorts of things you could have been doing mm. that you weren't weren't doing when you're on Earth. Yes. Now you didn't know about them because you couldn't see them. Because you, because you weren't aware of those potential pursuits. And no one taught us. And no one taught you, right? And so we didn't have the environment to do that. Exactly. Now, if you think about your spirit life, the t life that happens after you pass, you, can you see that it would make sense that if you could somehow um, have be taught by somebody, there's a potential that there's lots and lots of things that you don't know about, that once you're taught about them, you will see them. Yes, I am. That makes, that makes sense, doesn't it? Mm. And the reality is that there is a huge number of dimensions in the spirit world they, that go from... And you've yet to really even know about these particular dimensions in the spirit world. And if you think of them, they're like locations. They're locations as well as conditions. And they vary from what is called the hells or the dark places in the spirit world right through to very, very bright and beautiful places in the spirit world. Mm. And you've got the ability to visit them, but that ability depends on certain things. From here I can visit them? From, from where you are currently, you can visit them, but it will depend on certain things. And it's important to understand what it depends upon. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so what I'd like to do is talk to you about what it depends upon and then perhaps introduce you to some spirits who can, who, who can be a part of your education in the spirit world. Would you also be explaining why that hasn't occurred for me? Because well, I have heard you say mm -hmm. something about you go to a, your home that you've created. Mm -hmm. So me well, being that hasn't here. happened to you. Mm. Well, so I thought this was my home. Exactly. And it all depends on what you think as to where you're attracted. Does that make sense? And what you think is determined by what you believe. So, so because you haven't had any definite belief about an afterlife, hmm. you've only been attracted to the earth still, yeah, even after you've passed. I didn't believe in all that stuff. Exactly. And, and as a result of that, you're attracted to what's called the earth plane. In other words, 
you're a spirit who exists in the spirit world, who no longer has a mortal body on earth, but you're still attracted to living a life on earth. Well, all of us are, it's not just... That's correct, yeah, mm. all of you are. Mm. And while all of you are dependent upon living a life on earth, you are not going to see the life that you can live in the spirit world. Does that make sense? You are only going to see the things that you've been aware of. Okay. You're not going to see the things that you have been unaware of. So I've been blind. Yes, but it's a blindness created by belief. Does that make sense? Yes. So it's not a physical blindness. It's not that you can't see. It's that, it's that you've closed down the ability to see certain things. And that ability to see certain things can be opened up. Mm. And it's quite easy to open up the ability to see certain things. Mm. All right. Now, in all of your travels, you'll have noticed that there have been some people who have listened to you. Yes. So they are spirits who live like you do. Mm. And then there's other people who have not been able to listen to you at all. There's a lot that don't listen. And they are mortals. They are people that are still alive on earth. And that I did not understand. Mm. Mm. And so you've got group, a group of people who have passed into the spirit world who have a similar nationality to yourself and similar I ideas and concepts as yourself and those particular people you can interact with currently. Mm. And then you've got a group of people who you've been interacting with or attempting to interact with but they can't hear you and they can't see you. Mm. Only some people now I can. Exactly. Some people uh, have what's called a mediumistic ability. And what that means is that they have the ability to listen to people who have passed and to communicate with them even though they're still mortal. And I've discovered them here. Exactly. Hmm. Yep. And you're actually talking through one, through Anto. I did not realise it. <laughs> I thought I was just talking to you because you were aware of me. Yeah. So you're actually speaking through one of those mediums. So you can see his body now, eh? now that I've mentioned that to you. Mm. Yeah. So, so even that connection is something that you can do. You can, you can actually be a part of the person if they allow it and actually express yourself to other people on earth and that way you can have a conversation with them. Okay. Now in, in, the, in the past in Kenya, sometimes you've done that with people who have been like drunk or, or have been drinking a bit. Yeah, we dance. <laughs> yeah. And what you've done is you've taken over their body to a degree and then you've expressed yourself through their body. I yeah. see that. Does that yeah. make sense? Yes. Yeah. So that's what you've been doing since you've passed. Now what I suggest though that you do is you start finding out a lot more about the world in which you now live, which is the spirit world. And it involves a lot more than what's on the earth. In fact, it involves many more dimensional spaces and uh, you could call them almost universes. Of, of different things that you have the ability to discover under certain conditions. What are they? Well, the conditions are how much love you have in your soul. So the more love you have in your soul, the more you're able to discover different places of the spirit world. And the less love you have in your soul, the less you're able to, do, to, to discover all the places of the spirit world. So does that mean that because I have not found the spirit world, I do not have much love in me? Not necessarily, because obviously you have a desire to help people and that's a part of your expression of love, right? And a lot of people thought I was very loving to them and Ex kind. Exactly, yeah. So, so it doesn't necessarily mean that. It means that you've been blind in your belief. To that extent, that can block you. Exactly. All right. So, so for example, there's been people around you that have been trying to communicate with you who are also spirits, who know more about the spirit world than you do, but you haven't been able to see them. I haven't spoken to anyone of that nature. That's correct. You haven't been able to see them. But can I introduce you to some of them? Yes, yeah, certainly. Okay, well, I'm going to ask some of them to appear to you so that you can see them. Oh. They look like me. That's correct, yeah. When you say they look like you, do you mean they're black and... They're a bit taller. A bit taller, yeah. 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 Some of them are really short. Some are children. Some are children, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're a little bit brighter. Yeah. Some more than others. Yeah. Wow, they're all around. They're all of our friends now. Yeah, that's right. But the person standing in front of me is not like me. 
It's more like Kiyama. In what way? It's a she. It's not a he. That's correct, yeah. And Kiyama has another male with her. Yeah. They've just put their hands on my shoulder. Yeah, yeah. Their touches. Yeah. It's not often that you've felt touched since you've passed, oh, eh? Very gentle, mm. but... <clears throat> very loving. Yeah. yeah. Now, there's a general rule in the spirit world, and that is this. If a person is brighter than you are, then they know more than you do. And in particular, they know more about love than you do, because it's love that causes the brightness. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Yeah. Now, these people, notice that you couldn't see them before. No. But they have been there. It's just that you couldn't see them. Yeah, that's what she says. Yeah. And the reason why you couldn't see them is that because of your belief systems, because of what you believe. You believed things that meant that you couldn't understand that there was anything other than the earth. So just that sincere belief in that direction. Yeah. Meant that I could not see these people. Meant that you couldn't see the people who were in other places in the spirit world. Just that one belief stops you from seeing more truth. Does that make sense? Because I felt we were told spirits are... I'm aware that they existed. Yeah, well, in Africa, it's a very common thing to be everyone, everyone to be aware they existed, you know, the, from the tribal customs in Africa you know that there were, you know, people like doctors and so forth and medical people um, in, of olden times who were often talking about spirits and were often influenced by spirits and sometimes they were scary and sometimes... Just for them, though. That's what I thought. Yeah. Not for me. That's right, yeah. So, you know, there is this general belief in Africa that spirits are surrounding us. In fact, many of the customs in Africa, if you think of olden time Africa, many of the customs were about giving food to these spirits and, and doing all sorts of practices on earth, particularly at the time of one's death, mm. to, to appease the spirits and so forth. Yeah, we gave gifts. Yeah, yeah. So, so while the people in the spirit world could not really do anything with those gifts, um, there was a, a, an understanding that, that these spirits did exist. But did not necessarily equate that they were this type of person. Exactly. That they were just a normal person. Does that mm. make sense? Because all you see in front of you is just a normal person, isn't it? Yes. Because yeah. I've been attempting to talk to those type of people. Yeah. Not the bright people here, but yeah. Yeah. you know, the people on earth who thought and believed in. And can you see that the people on earth, you struggle to see them well, don't you? Yes. Most of the time, like for myself, I know you can see myself very clearly, but there's many people you can't see very clearly. Well, well, you can't see them until you've got to go through a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. And you can also see that that while you're on Earth, you you don't you didn't believe in this sort of afterlife. That you, you while you had some kind of concept of it existed, you didn't believe in it very firmly. And when I passed, it felt black and hazy. Yes. It was... That's what it's like on the earth. It looks black and hazy for yeah, the person like I, who I could see something, but I had to feel my way here. Yes. And it's very hard to see when there's sort of darkness, isn't there, around. And then, you know... And because the earth is primarily in darkness, you only, you only will see people who are a bit brighter than the normal darkness. Mm. There's a lot of greyness. Mm. You know, there are different... Like here, there's a lot more light. Mm. It depends. Depends where you are. Depends it? on where, where I am, yes. Yeah. So in different places you've been to, you can see hardly any light at all. Mm. And then other times you can see some light. That's right. Mm. And where there was being dark, I got scared, so... Yeah, so you stay. I thought about where I need to go. And, <laughs> off I went. and off you go to a new location. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, yeah. where's Kiyama? <laughs> off you go. <laughs> off I go. There she is. So there you followed her around a lot. <laughs> yeah. She was my safety. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so what, what both of you have been experiencing is what I, I would call the earthbound life. So after 
many people after they die on the earth spend quite a number of years, 30, 40, 50, sometimes 100 years even and longer, still on earth trying to have a life. And it's only after certain ones of their friends die and other, other people die and eventually they do not not feel connected to the life on earth anymore that they start wondering about what their future is. Mm. And so what I'm suggesting to you is that these spirits who are standing in front of you now, they are able to educate you about the spirit life. They can tell you many things about the spirit life. What gave them the passage? To come to you? And to find that. Um, well, they have learnt from other people. It's the same process where, where most people on earth don't have a very clear idea about what the spirit world is like. And so in order to get a clear idea, they need to be educated from somebody else who does know. Okay. So, so each of them have been educated through a process of other people being educated and so forth. And there are certain spheres in the spirit world, and the reason why I know a lot about those locations is because I've been in those locations. And, and for certain spheres in the spirit world, I was the first person to enter those locations, so a lot of the education of those locations came from me. Does that make sense? Yes. But I didn't hear any of that stuff on Earth. No, no. But and unfortunately, a lot of that stuff has been lost to Earth, and that's one of the reasons why myself and Mary and others are here again so that we can help people have more knowledge on earth about what's the truth about their future life. Thank you for your teaching. Yeah, no, it's my pleasure. Now, one thing I'd like to say to you though is there's two types of love. How do you mean? Well, one type of love comes from within your soul. In other words, from within your feelings, within your emotions. What I already have. It's the love that you have. Like, so it's the love you have for people. You know how you want to help people? Mm, well, love. that's a love, part of your love. What makes me warm. Yeah, it mm. does. And it makes you feel glad in your heart when you feel it, right? And that's one of the reasons why you've been attracted to trying to help people mm. of Kenya. But there, are, uh, there is another love that most people have never experienced or very few people understand, and that is God's love. That I do not understand. No. You haven't had any clear idea or concept about God. No. And so, so you haven't entered any relationship with God or received God's love at this point. Yes. Now, some of the people in front of you have received God's love. And what I'm going to do is ask those particular people just to step to one side for a moment. All right. And then what I'm going to do is ask them to... And, and you might need to shield your eyes here for a bit, but you just tell them when to stop. What they'll do is they will turn up their brightness to the point where they would normally be in terms of how bright they would normally be. I can't see them. Yeah, they're so bright. That too, too bright. It's like, it's I can't like see anything. In, it's like looking into the sun, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So we'll ask them to tone it But it doesn't feel hot. No, it's not hot, no. But that's how bright they actually are. So when they are at their home, that's how bright they really are. But in order to talk with you, they've had to tone themselves down, their brightness down, to a point that you could bear it. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, the reason why they have so much brightness is because they've received a lot of love from God. How do I get that? Well, the way to demonstrate uh, that, I, I can, they can talk to you about that. I, I don't need to discuss those matters with you because they will be able to show you how to receive this love from God. But so everyone can get that? Everybody on earth can get it. Now, the reason why I'm pointing this out is because you asked me the question, how can I help my brothers on earth right, and sisters on earth? Yes, I'd still love to do that. Yeah. And what I'm suggesting to you is receive this love from God first. And in that process of receiving love from God, you'll start to understand the truth of the universe, like how the universe actually works. And once you understand how the universe actually works, then you'll be able to share that understanding with people on earth. But you can't very well share it if you don't know yourself. Does that make sense? But if I had a belief system, mm -hmm. as you say, that didn't allow me to see this beautiful person, mm -hmm. how then... When I become that, will these people see me? That's a very good question. And what we're, this is why the education is very, very important on earth. But, 
But it is also one question that you will easily answer once you get into the condition of these people. Okay. The reason why is because if you can imagine, if you're that bright, you also have more power. Well, they do. Does that make sense? Mm. And if you have more power, then you have more of an understanding of how you can influence other people and help them see the truth compared to what you currently have. Yeah, that warmth that you feel from them. Mm -hmm. It's encapsulating. Yeah. And it's very attractive, isn't it? Oh, extremely. It draws, 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 draws you to, mm, to them. Very magnetic. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And that's the effect of love, right? But, it, but there are many other powers that they have as a result of this love, powers of, that, that where they're able to suggest things to people. And, and as long as they're not harming the free will of people, they have a, a large amount of power to help people grow. She says she did that with me. That's correct. How do you think you found me? Very, very funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So she influenced you yes. to be drawn through a process to myself. Does that make sense? Fascinates me. Yeah. Mm. So I she, just thought, yeah. So you just thought you were going Don't along and finding it by yourself, right? Yeah, I found this happy fellow. He's going to talk about all these wonderful things. Yeah. And, and the reality is that somebody else from the spirit world was influencing you with those choices and decisions that you make. And they were able to influence you because your will was in harmony with their influence. Mm. Does that make sense? And their influence was in harmony with love. They love you and care about you. And so they are influencing you in a certain direction. What do you mean that was something I had within me? Well, you know that feeling that you have within you that you wanted to help, you want to help your countrymen? Yes. Well, that feeling is like a spark of love that's in you, right? Mm -hmm. And this is something that they can then work with in order to influence you. So in other words, they can make suggestions to you where if you go here, you'll be able to help your, your fellow man more. If you go there, you'll be able to help, you'll learn things, you know. And I, become, I can learn to love more. Yes, and so what uh, these, these friends who have been influencing you for all of this time that you've been earthbound, they've been trying to influence you in different ways. Oh. Right? And that's something you will learn. But not all the time were you open to their influence. No, I didn't. I was not open. No. So they would be able to influence you sometimes, but other times when you're just wanting to have a party and dance and whatever else and get drunk with the friends and mates and whatever, you know, those particular times they couldn't influence you. No, there were other people there. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. But once, once you started to feel this feeling of warmth in your heart, which is this feeling that you have of starting to express your love, once that, once that started to happen, now their influence upon you could increase. So I'd love to be able to let others feel that mm -hmm. from me. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be wonderful to have that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So they found love through God. That's correct. So there's, there's two types of love, like I said. There's one, the love that comes from within yourself, and then there's a love that comes from within God's soul, within God herself. You've used the term soul many times. Yeah. And the soul, what you have now is called a spirit body. You know, when you can see yourself, you can see your own arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can see that's your spirit body. You can touch your own arm. You can feel it, the sensations of the touch. Yeah. That's your spirit body. Which is similar to what I felt like on Earth. It's similar, but it's a different body, isn't it? Yeah, and in it's fact, not. In fact, it's a bit more sensitive than your body on Earth. Yes. In the sense that there's more sensation. I'm aware of a lot more things. Exactly. There's a feeling. There's a lot more feelings, yes. Mm. And there's a lot more sensory sensations too. Yes. Than you had when you are on Earth with your physical body. Mm. But, but behind or encapsulating your body at the moment is something you can't see, and that's your soul. And you can't see it, and no spirit can actually see it. I can't. So what is it in them? Where's their soul? Their soul is encapsulating them too. That it's, a, it's surrounding them, but they can't see their soul either. What you're seeing when you see their brightness is the effects of their soul. Okay. Now their soul is a lot of different things, including their thoughts and emotions, their feelings, their desires, their passions. It's the real self. It has a memory of every experience in your entire life, 
all stored in the soul. And the soul can't be seen by the spirit body. So it can't be seen by your eyes. It can only be felt. You have to learn how to feel it. And that's called developing your soul, becoming more and more sensitive and aware of your feelings and, and the emotional nature of yourself. It sounds like I become more aware of who I am. You do, because that's the real person of who you are. And after, after you progress a little while, you'll realise that it's only a half of who you are. Mm. And every person has another half, which also has a body attached to it, a spirit body and a physical body if they're on earth, and it's just a spirit body if they're in the spirit world. And that's called your soul mate. So that's does, the other half of yourself. Does this soul then create me, the, what I am aware of? Um, no, and not really, because you, the person who you are, your true self, is your soul. So it doesn't create you, you are it. Mm. Right? God created it. I'm confused about that. Yeah. And these are things that you can learn from these spirits who are with you, because they understand all of these things. Okay. They understand about the soulmates, they understand about God's love and how to receive it, and they understand about the universe, a lot of things that you don't understand currently. Does that make sense? And the reason why I've introduced you to them is so that you can learn from them, be humble and learn from them. Thank you. Because they are like a, if you like, it's like going to school again. Yeah. <laughs> but it's going to school for a different reason. Because they're my teachers. Yeah, they become, become your teachers, if you let them. Because it's up to you to exercise your will. It's not like going to school on earth where you're forced to go. No, I welcome this. Yeah. It's where you, where you desire, your desires will depend on what you learn. So, but what I would suggest to you is, because God's infinite, there is an infinite amount of things that you can learn. But to learn them requires that you receive God's love into your soul. Because God's love transforms your soul and transforms the intellectual part of your soul into an ability to understand everything. So does that mean I need to go to the spirit world? To receive God's love? Um, no, you can receive God's love anywhere you are. But most likely what you will do is one of the things that they will show you is where you would currently live, right, if you, if you uh, let yourself go to the spirit world instead of staying here on earth. Mm -hmm. And they can also show you where you can live if you develop your soul with love. In other words, if you receive love from God or if you develop your own love further, where you could potentially live in the spirit world. So there are different places. There's different mm. places and every place is like an in addition, a different condition of love. And so as you grow in your condition of love, you, that, that makes you, if you like, eligible for the new location of love. Does that make sense? Yes. And every new location of love that's, that's in a better condition of love is brighter, happier, more beautiful than the last condition. So... All the things I did unlovingly yeah. <laughs> on earth, on earth, yeah. <laughs> and now yeah. that has an impact, does it? Of course, it has an impact on your soul, and so those things have to be felt. Now, there's two ways to feel them. One way is by going through it with your own feelings only, and another way is by asking God for God's love to help you get rid of the reasons why you did certain things. So. It's a lot easier doing it with God than it is doing it by yourself. And that's what these particular people who have brought to you understand. So this will, there is a sort of a balance, if you, if I can call it that. Yes, what were you thinking of? In terms of where it would put me in, into these places in the spirit world. Exactly. Your current condition, whatever that current condition is, will attract you to the location where you can live. The only way that you can go to a new location that's in a better condition of love is for your condition of love inside of your soul to change to that better condition so that it matches the, lo the, the condition of the location. Does that make sense? Yes. And then you can move from the, the lower location to the new location. Now, if you want to go to another location that's even more condition of love, so that's up here, then you'll have to actually do some things inside of your soul to, to release some things from your soul and receive more God, of God's love, more divine love from God, and that will make you eligible to live in the new location that's matching your condition. Does that make sense? There is hope for me. There's heaps of hope for everyone, actually. Now, you can actually do this quite rapidly if you wish. 
but you can also do it quite slowly. It all depends on your will and how you exercise your will. Okay. So, so if you decide to do it slowly because you don't want to listen to certain things they say and certain suggestions they make feel hurt, like they hurt and you don't want to feel the hurt and things like that, then it'll be a slow progression. Does that make sense? But if you decide that whenever they make a suggestion to you, you'll, let, you'll go into that and feel about, about that and release that from your soul and, and be repentant for the different things that have happened in the past, you know, on earth in particular, and then you'll progress very rapidly. It just depends on how you, what you decide and how to use your will. But it's not using your mind, it's using your willpower to, go f to, to actually release things from your soul. In other words, to, to be humble, to be humble to change. Does that make sense? Mm. You say the words, but I don't understand them as yet. Yeah, and this is why you're going to need some teachers. And that's why I've brought these people to you so that they can teach you. Mm. I'm slightly scared as to where I would end up. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, as long as you continue to progress in love, you're only ever going to end up in a better location. <laughs> mm. It's only if you choose to not progress in love or maybe even degrade in your condition of love that you would get in a worse location. So, so there's nothing to fear about progressing in love because you're always going to end up in a better location. Mm. The, only thing, the only thing to be concerned about is if you degrade your condition, then of course you're going to end up in a worse location. I feel more excited about it yeah. than I do about this fear. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And you've lived now on Earth for a long period of time after you've passed and you know that it's not a very satisfying type, type of existence. And the reality is there's beautiful, satisfa satisfying existence ahead of you in the spirit world. That, that doesn't mean that you won't want to come back and try to help people on earth as much as you possibly can. In fact, that will be usually one of the desires that you have, right? So I, if I do go to the spirit world, mm -hmm. I will have the ability to come back. You can, you can return to earth any time you want. And in fact, anybody in most locations of the spirit world can return to any place on earth any time they want. So have any of us done that in the past and we're not aware? In what regard? Been to the spirit world and come back? No. In the sense of... Um, when we passed. After you've passed? Yes. Um, no, because, you, because none of you have had a very firm belief about the spirit world, you see. Oh, yes, I, I understand. So you've been earth, what is called earthbound. Yep. What, that, what that means is that instead of going to the spirit world, many of you have, have stayed bound to the earth. Now, some of you just very temporarily went to the spirit world, but you didn't like what you saw, mm. and that's why you stayed earthbound. Does that make sense? Yes. And the reason why you didn't like what you saw was because there are certain, your condition of love is not such that the location is very nice and so the earth is nicer. So we don't, I don't look like her. No, that's correct. So you know that your condition in love is not as good as hers, right? Yes. So you know that you're not going to be able to live where she lives. Does that make sense? Not right away anyway. Mm. If you grow in love, then you will be able to live where she lives. I'm excited about change. Yeah. And so what she can do and what these people that I've brought to you can do is educate you about how you grow in love. And it might sound pretty strange at first. It might sound like something that you find hard to understand at first. Mm. And my suggestion is to still give it a go because you want to remember that basic principle that I said. And that is that anybody who is brighter than you and more loving than you knows more about the universe than you do. Mm. Does that make sense? It's a good motto to follow. And if you can remember that, then it'll make you stay humble when you're listening to people who are brighter than you. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, so what I suggest that we do now is that you go, you, you go and have a chat with these friends. They've got lots of things to share with you. They've got a lot, a lot of, a lot, there's a whole universes of discovery right, that they can show you. The key is any time you feel something, like an emotion of any thought, fear or grief or any other emotion, just let yourself fully feel it. Let yourself just embrace the emotion and completely feel it. No matter what it is. No matter what it is. So if you feel ashamed, let yourself feel ashamed. If you feel grief, let yourself feel the grief. If you feel scared, let yourself be frightened and shake. 
let yourself feel the emotion. Let, let the energy of the emotion flow through you. You will feel it flowing through you. You need to let that happen. That's a part of being humble. So there are certain things I'll show you that will trigger some ideas or concepts in your, that you go, oh, no, you know, and you have some kind of sad thought or something as a result of certain things I'll show you where you've learnt some new truth and it's shown you what happened with the old, you know, something that was wrong with the old. And it'll, it'll connect you to certain emotions and the key is to let yourself feel those emotions and be humble to those emotions. Thank you. Does that make sense? Mm. And if you do that and you seek God's love with all of your heart as these people will show you how to do, then you'll progress very, very rapidly. But you'll also have a greater power to help and assist the people on earth. And as you do get to that place, you'll find that you'll want to help all sorts of people on earth, not just people in Kenya. You want to help people all over the earth. Mm, that'll be exciting. Does that make sense? Yes. So they will show me that as well. They'll show you that as well, because the more love you have in your soul, the more you have love for everyone, not just people who are your countrymen. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so the more loving you become, the more love you will feel not just for your countrymen, but for everyone equally. Yeah. And so that, that's an indication that there's more love growing in your soul. Mm. And there's many other indications as well. Your body will become brighter. You, yeah, if you look at your body at the moment, you can see lines and cracks and all sorts of sort, certain things in your body, right? That look like sores, if you like, in your body. Right? And those things will disappear as well as mm. you go through this process. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm. Yeah. A lot to learn. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot to learn. So what I'd suggest that you do is you allow yourself to do that and, um, and then if you've got further questions, we're happy to discuss those questions with you. But to be frank with you, you're, you're the teachers that I've just introduced you to, they can answer all of your questions. Mm. Yeah. They know the answers to all of your questions because they've had to answer them themselves. I'd like to follow them. Yeah. They sing a lot. Yeah, yeah, they'll sing a lot and they dance a lot. They dance a lot. Not quite how you've been dancing on earth. But no. <laughs> but they do do those things. Yes. Yeah. No, we're all happy to go. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Well, Thank you it's for my, all the time that we spent with you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Mm. And, and I look forward to meeting you both um, in the future when you've had a bit more of experience about the spirit world. Look forward to returning back. Yeah, yeah. And perhaps... When we do go to Kenya, you might like to return and have a chat through Mary, my partner, and, and I would love to do that and and talk to the different people in Kenya that we meet. Kiama would love to have a chat. Yeah, mm. yeah. we would be hanging around a few people who were going to go down there. Yeah, yeah, and we wish them the best. Yeah, so Thank it's you lovely to meet you both, and uh, and I know you're going to enjoy the spirit world. A lot more, perhaps, than you actually enjoyed the earth. <laughs> mm. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. That's good, Anthony. How would you go with that? It was good that you just let yourself feel your, the emotions at times. Yeah, we I, could have I focused, struggled at the start. Yeah, I could have focused more on their emotions because there was quite a few grieving type of emotions that both of them need to feel. But they'll, they'll get that assistance in the spirit world mm. uh, with the different people that are helping them. And, uh, but it's good that you just allowed the emotion to flow because that's what helped you stay connected with them. Yeah, I was feeling at the start that I was... I didn't realise it, but I started to feel how tense I was yeah. and um, how that almost puts me out of body almost. Yeah, it to makes a you step like. away from yourself. Mm. Yeah. yeah, And then as, um, no, as, as it was continuing, I just... Relaxed more. Relaxed a lot more and, mm -hmm. and then um, I could see certain associations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see how they're, they've been living a life where they're sort of seeking pleasures on the planet in order to, you know, get some satisfaction in their life, but it wasn't very satisfying in the end. Mm, yeah. To feel some sort of value. Yes. On earth they yeah. felt value yeah. from the pl whatever their act activities, a activities were. Activities were, yeah. yeah. Their political activists, yeah. 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 And then they were a bit disgruntled by that whole process. Yeah, and they died you know, Pretty yeah, hard, you know, it was a hard death. So naturally they're going to have quite a lot of grief about, about their death to experience. Um, and, you know, while I could have focused on those particular things, 
um, they they will their spirit teachers will be able to help them with those particular things mm -hmm. better better than I in a short period of time can do. It's interesting the comment you made in relation to they'll be able to help people other than their own people because yeah. their guide was actually a white person. Yeah, and that's what's took him back. Yeah, that's right. They both just stood back for that. It was like, how could it possibly be? <laughs> yeah. So they're even questioning whether, you know, they, whether it's anomaly for them to be black or not. Well, the reality is they saw their, their guide was a person who comes from Africa, but, um, but um, because the person's developed more in love, obviously sometimes the, the skin pigmentation changes Change. as, as that happens, you know, mm. and you just become brighter. So you don't easily see the pigmentation of the skin uh, the brighter a spirit becomes. So you, you can see the histori history of, the, of, the, of different races, but only generally when you're in the same condition as them. So in other words, uh, if you're in a, in a celestial sphere, uh, a black person still remains a black person, because you, and you see them, but they're so bright uh, you, you don't see them as white, though. You still see them as the race that they came from on Earth. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. In their spirit form. But, uh, but when you're a, a spirit in, in a darker condition as he, as he was, looking at that particular spirit, you don't... S you, because the spirit is so bright, you really all, are, all you're seeing is the brightness. You don't see the, the racial history of the person. What do you feel their guides... What condition of love their guides are in, in what sphere? Well, there, there were a number from different spheres. The, the children were from the second sphere and they had just come out of interest. Um, the, the, the guides were, from, uh, were on the divine love path in, in higher spheres no, and, and there were some who were not yet at one with God and there were others who were at one with God. So there's a, there was a big mixture that came. Mm -hmm. And I asked for that to happen so that, so that he could see that there was a contrast in love. Yeah. And that's why I asked for the ones who were de developed in love, uh, in divine love, to go to one side and then go to their full brightness so that he could see the, the level of condition, if you like. Mm. So, yeah, there were some there that were, were celestial um, spirits, but, uh, but they, um, they had to tone themselves right down to get to his condition. But in, in toning themselves right down, it was difficult for him to determine what their race, racial background actually was. Mm -hmm. yeah. The reality is they were African, but he, oh, right. he, he, wouldn't have, he wouldn't have seen that very easily. He'd see the facial features of African, but the skin and everything looks a lot brighter, so it's hard to tell what colour it is. Mm. Um, it's only if you're in the same condition that you can still tell. And my images are also still slightly distorted, I guess, because... I see sort of like an image of being very bright and different heights of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the different heights are, uh, are all a lot of that is about different development too because mm -hmm. you, you, you spirit body does grow quite significantly um, once you've received divine love in comparison to just receive, it being developed in natural love. So there, there is quite significant changes to your spirit, spirit body as well. Yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, I thought, I thought that was clear, clear and good. Okay. okay. Yeah, that was good. The, uh, it was pretty easy to feel them and feel, feel their nature. And you stayed connected to their feelings, which is quite good. Yeah. Kiyama wanted to talk yeah. as well, but yeah. she's now in the process. Yeah, that's right. So she's excited. Yeah. Mm. No, I, was, I thought really in, there's no need for both of them to speak. Um, mm. They were both hearing. It's interesting how I'd been following her around whenever he gets into trouble or feels yeah, like it's dark. I was thinking about that with Jane. <laughs> how much comfort I get by being around Jane. Yeah. 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 And you can see how relationships on earth are often developed, can't you? Because we, we feel a certain person sort of makes us feel better. Mm. Uh, and so we're drawn to them. And that's what he was finding with, finding with Kiyama. Yeah. Kama made him feel better under certain circumstances. So he might go and do a bit of dark things, you know, like you know, have a bit of a party and overcloak some drunk people on earth and then feel himself in darkness too much and, and become frightened and then seek... Where's Kiyama? Where's Kiyama? <laughs> yeah, he felt like she was a lot more ethical in, in, her, in her nature. Yeah, and that, that uh, is often the case with men and women uh, on earth... Um, where, you know, where they've been brought up in a society where men have been dominating women. You, you, usually the men have a, have a lower condition than the women. And as a result, um, 
when they pass, the men feel drawn to the women, but they can't always get to them. And it, the reality is if Kiyama had gone to the spirit world, and once they both go to the spirit world at this point, they'll find that Kiyama will be in a better condition of love than, than he will be. And as a result, um, he, he might not be able to go to her. She'll have to come to him, you know, mm. until he receives divine love. And then, of course, things will change quite rapidly then. And I feel they'll both, they'll both do that. Mm. Um, you know, they both don't have any real impediments to not doing it. There's no religious beliefs that they've got to unlearn. There's no uh, real strong beliefs they have about the spirit world that they've got to unlearn. So it's highly likely they'll both embrace the divine love quite quite easily. Mm. Mm. Yeah. They feel really nice. Yeah, that's very good. They were imposing originally three days ago. <laughs> yeah, no, they get, can they get quite chat. forceful, can't they? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Just, I just need some time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so when I first raise with you the poss possibility of doing these things... They were right there. They, go, they come and impose themselves sometimes quite strongly. Mm. And, uh, and, and, and you'll find that happen more and more regularly as we do this more regularly. Um, there'll be spirits come to you who just say, you know, they'll be quite forceful with you about, I want to have a talk next sort of type of feeling. Yeah. Um, but but the, key, the key is just to allow our guides to choose what's the best course of action in mm. terms of channeling on the night, you know. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, that's very good. That's a good channeling, Anto. Thank you. And um, we might uh, break there, actually. Thanks for, for those people who have been watching or listening to that. And, uh, and we might do another one soon, shortly after, mm. depending on how Anto feels. I'll discuss that with him off camera. Yep. Thanks. Thank you.